The collapse of building companies all over the country is creating headlines. COVID, the war, labour shortages and a lack of supplies all contributing. It's heartbreaking, it's livelihoods and it's jobs lost. But at the same time, I was reading all of these stories, I was also being bombarded by articles about Harry Trigoboff and the latest mega site he's purchased for what feels like the millionth massive new development. He's Australia's richest property developer, a billionaire, so clearly he knows what he's doing. Well, I wanted to find out how the Meriton King was tackling these same challenges seemingly better than everyone else. I visited Harry at headquarters this week to talk business, his own ego, and as a man born to Russian parents, the war in Ukraine. Harry, first of all, thank you so much for joining me on Erin. Very happy to be here. You're a good man. You are also continuing to buy and invest whilst other companies are pulling back significantly. What makes you special? My whole company was always built on always working because building is like a team. We are a team. And once you start sacking and stopping, you're no good anymore. So sometimes I build when there's not as much profit. Basically, I'm in the right business because my partners are the government, they can't afford for the housing to drop. And the banks, they can't afford the housing to drop. So I couldn't have better partners. <laughs> and they're f forever. Well, sometimes they make mistakes and <laughs> they go sad, but that doesn't matter. Just wait. So that's why I believe in it. And that's why I always build. What do you make of the current property market? I'm very disappointed that the people that write only talk about interest rates. Sure, <laughs> the interest rates when they rise is bad for the market, for, for the prices, 100%. But we have to take into account that at the moment we have no migrants and we don't have workers coming. So when these come, the, we will, the demand will get even bigger. And the demand is very great. That's why the rents are going up. So it's just a matter of time till the prices go up. The prices have to go up because even the rents, as much as they have gone up, are still lower than they were before the virus. They write about how it went up, not that much. Now, when we talk about prices, sure, <laughs> the prices go up in surface paradise from Main Beach to Broad Beach. <laughs> but that takes that away. Prices are not going up. <laughs> 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 so, so you need to be patient, right? If you're looking for a quick hit of cash, you, you're in the wrong game. That's right. You can't because the th there are things beyond your control. Yeah. Doesn't matter how clever you are, and in theory, how you do everything right, but in practice, you must allow for all kinds of problems. On the other hand, you also make a lot of money that you don't foresee. It goes both ways. <laughs> So to be successful must have patience. To have patience must not overreach. So when everybody was building eight stories, I was building four stories. I said, I will catch up. Never mind. Now I passed them all. So just <laughs> patient. You don't overreach. Someone who's been very patient, Anthony Albanese. He's wanted a job for a long time. He's now got it. Yeah, Good on it, him. It, yeah. What do you think about Anthony Albanese? Well, still too early to say, but I agree with him completely that the Reserve Bank should go easy on raising interest rates. <laughs> I'm not a great admirer <laughs> of the Americans. <laughs> they raise the interest rates and the inflation is still going up. And now they say they have a recession. So I don't know that there you are. Talk to me about your decision making process. So you've just bought this big development on the Gold Coast. You've got three at Macquarie Park as well, which they describe as your most ambitious project yet. I want to know if it's still the same as it was 50 years ago, when you look at whether this is a good deal or not a good deal. Yeah, it's the same, but it's different in this way. 50 years ago, I had to build and sell, because if I didn't sell, I wouldn't get cash. Today, I have cash, so I can wait if I think something is underpriced right, to sell, right? So 
And then now I can build to sell, I can build to keep, and I can do service apartments. So for instance, today, the prices are falling on when I sell, the rents and the service apartments are going up. So I lose some, I win some. They call you High Rise Harry. Do you like that name? Yeah, yeah, I am High Rise Harry. Do you consider sure. yourself a man of the people? Where are you your happiest? Yeah, yeah, I am the man of the people, always, yes. So when I started, they asked me, why are you successful? That I'm going 50 years ago. I said, I have clever women and strong bricklayers. <laughs> now, just give me those two, nobody can hit me. You were born in China to Russian parents. Yeah. This is something I've thought about a lot since the war broke out, thinking about people of Russian heritage and, and particularly those who don't live in Russia. What do you make of what's going on in Ukraine at the moment? I think that Putin is a complete crazy guy. He's, he's nuts and a bad man. He's, he's not good and he's nuts. He's not good. Now, Zelensky, he's a very brave man. I think he's terrific. <laughs> I don't know if I would take on Russia if I was he. I mean, it's very good for the world what he's doing, Zelensky, but it's very, very tough decision that, that he took the way he goes. I always thought, though, how come the Ukrainians are such great fighters? Really, they're great fighters because if they lose, then they lose everything. They, no house, no everything they worked for is gone. That's why they're such great fighters. And I thought, Let's say somebody attacked Australia, our guys would also fight. He'd fight for his house, for everything he has. So that's something that guys like Putin has to take into account, that people will fight for their house. He's not, they're not fighting for Zelensky. They're fighting for their house, for, for what they have. It's desperation, isn't it, when that's you right. give people no other choice almost. So they fight. That's it. Well, what do you want your legacy to be? What, what, what do you want in a hundred years people to look back and, and say when they talk about Harry Trigoboff? I have no, no interest in that at all. Don't care at all? No. While I'm here, that's what I care. Would you say you've got an ego? hundred percent, yeah, in some things. But I know where I have no ego. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that when I'm 89, I can't compete with a guy who is 45. <laughs> So you know your limits. <laughs> oh, I definitely know them. <laughs> what drives you? What motivates you? You've got enough money. You, you've had enough success. What, what, what makes you keep going? Well, that makes me happy. You see, that what I do. So when I was 35, I already made a bit of money. And they told me, why do you still work? I said, oh, I like it. I make it. When I was 50, they asked me this. When I was 80, they thought, oh, you're very clever, Harry, that you're still working. So there you are. <laughs> By consensus, what I'm doing is the right thing. Absolutely. Well, Harry, thank you so, so much. Thank you very thank much you, for sir. seeing me. Thank, thank you. you. I'm glad to have the opportunity.